We don't tell the right stories. Or, or when we do, we tell them wrong. We focus on the wrong parts. Like, like there's a story we like to tell ourselves about life. In the story, we will grow up, go to college, have a career, get married, have a family, grow old, and when, after a very long life, it is time to get our affairs in order, life will let us know. As if, as if death will be so kind as to warn us, he will inform us, like when at the end of a trip, a text arrives, an alert to our phone that says, say your goodbyes, tend to your home, contact your lawyer, settle your affairs. We believe that story to be true until we are blindsided by heartbreak that seems so unfair. But he's so much debt, it is a struggle just to get air. Everything was fine, and then out of nowhere, the phone rings. A siren wails. We crash straight into a doctor's chair as the hair on our neck stands up. We stand up unprepared as she pulls the air from our lungs so we can't speak. We listen as she says the words, Critical condition. Terminal. Hit and run. It's in his lungs. You are dying, and there is nothing to be done. And when we tell the story of life insurance, that's the story we tell. We focus on death, the tragedy, the sadness, but that's telling it wrong. And I'm not saying there isn't pain or heartache or sacrifice. Of course, of course there is. That's life. I mean, those things happen. For the same reasons, tooth fairies and sunsets and, and great wine and grandchildren happen. And that's life. It's not that the tragedy isn't there. It's that it isn't all that's there. I mean, there's so much more. I mean, in all this hopelessness, hope is. But to see it, we have to shift our focus. Like standing in the middle of a burnt out forest only we don't notice. Instead, we are drawn to where a perfect blue crocus lifts up its head to remind us that on the most tragic days, after we are dead and gone, life will find a way to go on. I mean, sometimes what happens in a moment stays with us for years, and yet the living must lift their head persevere. That is why at some point in the middle of all those tears, a laugh and a memory finds its way out. And when it is needed most, a check appears with a memo line that may as well read, despite the fact that my body is no longer here, I still am. My love lives even though I don't. My presence will be present even though my body won't. As sure as death is part of life, life is also part of death. So when your last exhale will wait no more, your loved ones will pick it up from the bottom of your lungs, place it lovingly onto their own and complete your breath. The heart can stop beating even as it refuses to. The body can stand tall even as it is laid to rest. But it will only if you choose to ensure that a check will check on them on your behalf for years after you've left because the answer is no. When the question is, are you interested in preparing for your death? But when the question is, do you want to take care of your family? The answer is always yes. If you ask my dad about dying, he will tell you he doesn't worry about his final resting place. He worries about my mother and paying the mortgage so she will finally have a place to rest without worry. My friend told me he had one thought as his son raced to the hospital at three in the morning with him in the back seat struggling to breathe. He thought, what will happen to my son if I die? I mean, that's life. He told me later, he said, that's how it works. Real love means it happens to you both. We don't buy car insurance for when we get hit. We buy it for when we hit someone. We don't buy life insurance for when we die. We buy it for when they don't. We buy it because when we love someone, we want to protect them from any added despair, any hardships that can be spared to experience the happiest moments, even when we won't be able to experience them beside them. And it gives us comfort to know if we aren't able to have those moments, we can provide them. I mean, moments, moments like, um, like walking down the aisle, right? Or the first grandchild born, moving into your new dorm, eating together as a family, hanging, hanging pictures on the wall of your first home. In all of those moments, dad is here. Mom is, is with us. Ethan lives. It is because of Susan this was possible. In all of those moments, we are none of us alone. This is not about memories, but what our lives are able to become. This is about understanding that when you love someone, you do whatever you can to help them, to hold them, to enfold them in the truth of this immutable fact. Life insurance 
is the final loving act of a person who at the end didn't see flashes of his own life. Instead, he saw the future he wanted for his parents, his kids, his wife, and he knew that if their pain could somehow be lessened, their load perpetually lightened, then perhaps their grief will be less sharp than it might have been, and by preparing for what might be despite being frightened, it's like taking your loved one softly by the wrist, holding out the life insurance as a gift and saying this, this is for all the flowers I would have bought. These are pennies for all of our children's thoughts, the mortgage for the house we finally got. I don't know if it's enough, babe, but it's a lot. Please use it to make the life we dreamed about exist. And if our kids ever wonder if I love them, you give them each a kiss while clenching this life insurance policy in your fist and you tell them there is no doubt he loved us. He did this.